the yin to the yang, the crap to the gold. This is the worst of 2023. I know that there is some criticism against these kind of lists, and I understand when you're just shitting on things, absolutely. That is kind of just detrimental. It's not exactly helping your argument. But when you do actually have decent criticisms about movies and the state of the industry, as which yet we have seen, there were big studios that suffered massive losses this year. And it's because they just got to this sense of normalcy with just delivering whatever. Like the idea of that people will just go and see something because of the brand, not because that the story needs to be good or the movie needs to be entertaining or the characters need to be well written and well acted. Just the fact that they think we're simpletons and we'll just go and see whatever and we'll eat it up. Like bad fucking soup, which was the wrong type of food I was using when I was talking about The Flash. This is a movie that was in development hell for years and the kind of the cream of the crop in terms of the crap mountain that was Warner Brothers in the end of the DCEU. This movie just had so many issues with it just getting made from keeping Ezra on despite the fact that they were clearly insane and they will probably never get work in Hollywood again to the very ham-fisted attempt to try and get people to watch the movie because of Michael Keaton Batman because they knew the movie was crap to the absolutely atrocious CG which was a common factor for a lot of bad movies this year but also thankfully pointed out to a lot of studios hey you guys are terribly abusing visual effects artists and look what happens when you go with the lowest common denominator you get garbage it's really sad when the television show outruns your giant big blockbuster movie I, i'm happy that this era is over and this is a great massive stain, but it's also not going to be the only superhero movie on this list. Much like last year, I'm just kind of going on a wave of conversation. I'm just going to go from one thing to the next because that was what I liked. I don't kind of like ranking shit because I feel it's just stupid. It's pointless and it's just non-important. It feels like there's nothing to substance to it. You just talk about what's awful. Speaking of totally inconsequential substance, Fast X? I forgot I saw this until I had to go through all my tickets. Cannot believe that I almost forgot about one of the craziest Jason Momoa experiences, but that's because this movie is just so far into the seriously stupid zone that it is on par with Fast 9. The last Fast movie was awful. This one had maybe a speck of not shit in it, but it is so fully accepted how stupid this series is, it overstepped. It is now thinking that, oh, we should address the memes, when you know you don't do that because then you kill it. You kill the jokes about it. Except the family one, they'll get away with that one forever, I swear. From Vin Diesel's just awful acting in this movie to the complete almost lack of any sort of realism with any of the car scenes, Fast X is a very, very clear sign to Universal that, that they have sucked this cow well fucked dry. It is dead. Disney is looking at it going, man, guys, I thought that we were milking shit over here. But Disney is not exempt from this now i know that some people said the marvels wasn't good i've also heard that it wasn't bad either i didn't see it i just had no desire to it didn't want to um, i didn't want to see a disney product again because i already saw ant-man 3. i admittedly waited till this was out of theaters and i'm happy i didn't spend the money on it because holy god this movie is just the epitome of how much Marvel and Disney think that we will just go and see these movies because that Marvel's in the title. The absolute epitome of just pointless trash from a inconsequential hero that somehow got <laughs> a trilogy. There are three trilogies in the Marvel Universe that have had the same director attached to the, their trilogy, and this is the worst one. The absolute epitome of studio bootlickers. Ant-Man 3 has nothing to it that has any sort of sentimental or individual value. From Jonathan Majors giving, honestly, not that great of a performance, not only in terms of what he was given as for writing material, but also just him himself, making Kang this completely inconsequential villain, and now they are even more inconsequential as <laughs> the character's just been written off now due to what Majors is going through. But this was the setup for your big bad, and they're like, oh, well, there's more of him. Like, who gives a fuck? You beat one. Have we not learned from how Disney handled Kylo Ren, you idiots? And speaking of beating your villain at the beginning of your film or series, 
Rebel Moon Part 1. Wow, guys. Y'all thought that giving Zack Snyder more writing material and more writing ability would help? No. I saw this at the tail end, and I'm just amazed that there is so much copium for this movie. It is dull, it is boring, it is dry, it is completely almost lacking in any originality. The amount of shit it is ripping off without any form of embarrassment is just insulting. 40k, Star Wars, Seven Samurai, the amount of shit this movie is ripping off is stupid. And the fight scenes are awful, the special effects are very bland and dry. Despite the fact that Snyder says he's not gonna make a Star Wars movie, he literally ripped off the freaking new Disney Star Wars movie because your main character beats the bad guy in the first movie. And he's probably gonna get beaten again in the next one, and whatever. It's, it's just bad. But it was Snyder writing. What did you expect? Speaking of bad writers, this was a completely predictable outcome. The Exorcist the Believer. Those of you who had any kind of fucking hope after David Gordon Green completely messed up his Halloween trilogy, which let's be honest, the first one was a fucking fluke. I don't know what you were thinking. This is trash. Awful, not scary, not interesting, insulting, and pointless, and a complete disrespect to the fans of the original Exorcist. I'm not going to talk about it anymore because it doesn't deserve any more time to be talked about. And continuing the disrespect, hey historians, did you get to see a Napoleon? This is not so much a critique about the movie itself, it's okay. It's weirdly comedic. I find that really odd, but in terms of a historical drama, this is one of the worst defenders I've seen. It's so poorly done in terms of portraying the character of what Napoleon was, but not only who he was, but also the events surrounding him. There are things that happen in certain elements that are completely out of time zones. There's a sniper rifle in this movie. That should be enough to just go make you go, what the fuck? And that just is a element on top of an element on top of an element of historical inaccuracies. Me being a real big fan of Rod Steiger and Waterloo and that movie in general, I was very taken aback by this film and I don't care if there's going to be an extended cut of it on Apple. I don't want to sit through Joaquin Phoenix's acting in this again. It's really weird how bad he is in this movie. The boat line was funny though, in a very stupid way. Hey, speaking of stupid, Meg 2. The whole thing about just going to one of the deepest locations in the ocean and then saying, hey, you know, if you just let out all of the air out of your lungs, you won't be crushed to death. Nah, that's it. That was just the dumbest fucking thing I've seen in film all year. Just the dumbest thing. So yeah, we got a lot of dumb movies, we got a lot of bad movies, but we also got some disappointing ones. And this one, I had some hope. Even though I saw a lot of the writing on the wall, I had some hope. I had some just mm, hopium that it wasn't going to be bad. Or at the very least, it was going to be better than the previous movie. But alas, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny was probably one of my most disappointing movies of the year. This film was something I've been waiting for for quite a long time. I had some hope. James Mangles has proven himself to be a really good director, but when you have Disney executives and Kathleen Kennedy just fucking vulturing you, making rewrite after rewrite after rewrite, this movie cost 300 fucking million. Now, I know that Harrison Ford was a costly penny, and I know that the de-aging they did for him was a costly penny and all of the reshoots they had to do because stories got leaked and endings got leaked and the vitriol from those forced them to change, which I'll be honest, of course they fucking did. I don't know why they thought those fucking endings were going to be a good idea. But the thing that just disappoints me the most is I never thought that I would say that King Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is better. I originally thought that it was on the same level of this movie when I saw it. Because let's be honest, we all just don't talk about anything after The Last Crusade. That was the end of this trilogy, this character. But the more and more I thought about it, the more disappointed I was. Whereas Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is campy, corny, and just bad, this movie is just disappointing. It seems that Disney just loves to make Harrison Ford as depressing as he actually is and just ruin his characters. They He has the exact same arc as Han Solo from the Disney trilogy. Kind of makes sense, but you already did it and it's just so 
run of the mill. Phoebe Waller Bridge is all right, but she's a very condescending character and not very likable in this movie. I walked into this movie wearing my Indiana Jones hat with some hope, and I left feeling very embarrassed wearing the hat. Not only because of my age, it just wasn't fun. It wasn't that fun experience that we're used to, and it was a very, very disappointing end to a character. And I really, truly hope that we don't see it again. It, fucking Harrison's 80. He said that he's done with a character. This movie, despite the amount of money that Disney put into it, will be forgotten. It will be talked about in jokes. It will be talked about in ha-ha-has. But you will never, ever, ever see people wanting to do a rewatch of this. This movie will be forgotten. And it's because of how utterly disappointing it was. That's it, guys. That's the last video of 2023 for me. Thank you all for coming along on this journey and this adventure with me. I hope to be a bit better about watching movies next year. I said that in the best of, which if you guys haven't seen that yet, please check that out because there were some good movies this year. There were a lot of really good movies, but I really do want to get back into this again. I really like talking about it. I feel like I get a little bit rusty. I'm going to be releasing a video probably maybe on January 1st or maybe January 2nd, just talking about what I plan to do. I have some plans for the channel so long as I can manage that in my regular job there's also like a few updates that are coming for next year that are cool for me i, I don't know about you guys if you'll care but if you want check that out but until then guys thank you all again thank you so much for your comments your likes your shares just for giving me a minute of your time uh, so i hope you liked the video and if you've never seen me before i hope you would subscribe and i will see you all in 2024